Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O. This video we're going to cover, this is the last video I'm going to do in a series of protein synthesis inhibiting um, antibiotics. So we're going to talk about chloramphenicol, which chloramphenicol does inhibit protein synthesis at the 50S ribosome. So it's been around a long time, so it's got, it was used historically a lot more than now, and we'll talk about why. So it was discovered from another Streptomyces, Streptomyces Venezuela in 1947. In 1949, it actually was the first broad-spectrum antibiotic that was uh, approved by the FDA, and that's because the only actual antibiotic that had been approved before was penicillin, which was only effective against gram-positives. Now, just as a quick reminder, that doesn't count the sulfa drugs because they're not true antibiotics because they're synthesized in the laboratory. Now, um, so is chloramphenicol now. But, so chloramphenicol was a natural antibiotic. It was found in nature, but it was also it easily synthesized in the laboratory. So this was the first um, synthetically like mass-produced um, antibacterial where you took a natural antibiotic and, and synthesized it in the lab. So chloramphenicol has been around a long time. Uh, it was a ton of it was produced. It could penetrate our body tissues well. It was super effective against you know broad spectrum, right? Effective against a lot of bacteria, which means that it got used a lot, and uh, um, which was leading to some resistance issues. But I mean, it was used to treat like you name it, right? Like meningitis, typhoid fever, conjunctivitis. I mean, it, pretty much anything. It was being used to treat. The problem and the reason you don't see it in use um, any, anywhere near as much now is that there's some pretty serious side effects. Um, there was something called a gray baby syndrome that would kill babies, especially if they were premature babies. Um, the, the drug would build up, just the enzymes needed to get rid of the drug and the liver's ability to get rid of the drug uh, and, and kidney's ability to get rid of the drug just seemed to be uh, lacking in babies. So if chloramphenicol would build up in their system, it would basically sh shut off electron transport. So it would cause all sorts of problems, but it doesn't matter. You have to know that. But it does have an impact on bone marrow, so it can act, it can actually um, decrease blood cell production for in several ways. Some some you can actually develop aplastic anemia and never come back from it. But others, um, it's a temporary loss of blood cell production that does go away when you get off the drug. But the reason I want to talk about that is that the, the reason they believe that that happens, at least in this this type of, of loss of blood cells, is it, this drug is impacting the mitochondria of stem cells that are making new blood cells. And the reason that's important is you do have to remember that our mitochondria have 70S ribosomes. So these drugs that inhibit uh, the 70S ribosomes of bacteria, there are potential side effects in human cells, right? So it's not completely selectively toxic, meaning that um, it doesn't, like, like with peptidoglycan cell wall inhibitors, we don't have peptidoglycan cell walls, so there's there's no concern there really. Um, whereas with these drugs, there is the concern that they're impacting mitochondrial function. I, I talked about this in the mitochondria video, but I noticed working with athletes that it did appear to impact them in ways it doesn't impact the rest of us. And I think part of that is, you know, me sitting here, I'm not taxing my mitochondria. They can they can keep up with me pretty easy. But I noticed with high level athletes that a lot of these antibiotics did impact their performance. And I do have to wonder how much of it is uh, the impact on these mitochondria. So I'm, not, I'm definitely not saying um, it completely, but that is, it's just worth noting. All right, so that is chloramphenicol. It had a lot of uses uh, in the past, and because of these side effects, uh, just not much anymore. But I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.